So he's like, for each line everybody does, you get $100. And then $200 if you do it off his d Nobody said shit, all the guys were there. Next thing you know, we got four guys in a shower. Or Where did the guys come from? They're just like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that! Look at that thing! What is up my friends and welcome to Uncensored, my podcast where I'm gonna share my uncensored truth from my balls, from Z Jeff Castro's balls, and from Zach Attack's balls into your beautiful faces. Guys, we just finished a photo shoot here in this beautiful room. Zach, what was your favorite moment during this photo shoot today? I'm gonna have to go with the, uh, the original ski masks. Okay, yeah. What's life right now? What's life right now? <laughs> That was uh, probably my favorite. I, I sometimes I have these visions, you know, I look at these for modeling photo shoots and I see those and I just think like bank robber porn. Mm -hmm. But then we do it and it looks it looks dope, you know? It's what like I mean? a it's like a dominant, edgy, unique vibe. Too. Yeah, it's cool. Would you say you have like um you're very like a, a more masculine dominant man? Yeah, no, yeah? for sure. Yeah. yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Where did you so you're like you give me very like American vibes, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Because your last name is Attack, you know? My last mean? name is Beach. Your last name's Beach? Yeah. Okay, because I just know your Instagram handle is like Zach Attack. No, Zach so Attack's saved, mine. I literally yeah. s I saved you in my phone as Zach, last name Attack. Really? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. And same with Travis, Travis Beach Boy. I, I saved him Travis, the Beach Boy. <laughs> <laughs> so, so where are you from originally now? What brought you to Los Angeles? I'm from Tennessee. No, you're from Tennessee as yeah, well? Yeah, we're both from Tennessee. I thought you were from Arizona or something like no, that. No, I'm living in Arizona. Oh. Tennessee. Well, you set up in Nashville. You think that was just... You think that was just a random? Think, I don't know. I thought you were just traveling or something. I'm from Nashville. That's okay. Where I went to school. So what's it like growing up in Nashville? Do you grow up with like when you were a kid, like cowboy boots and guns and shit, or like? See, that's no, I, I didn't. I, it's very chill. It's slow pace. I did grow up on a farm though. You on a farm? Dirt bikes, four wheelers, cows. Yeah. I'm okay. I'm I'm German, right? So I have no. Mm -hmm. All my knowledge about the U.S. is based on that, like the the cowboys, the guns, yeah. like American Pie, Super Size Me. So I was expecting America to be full of like chicken wings and guns. And then I mean, I come, it is. And then I come to New York, and it's all like kale juices and yeah. You see, know? I didn't have any of that. No. No, no kale juice. Just, it was all country. Okay. No kale juices, no city vibes. I got a question. Growing up in uh, Nashville, did you guys do, we talked about you did blunt rides where you would get in the car, mm -hmm. smoke a blunt. Yeah, that, that was the thing to do because other than that, what, there's nothing to do really. It was the back roads. Okay. Nature. So it's, we just do blunt rides. Just blunt get, rides? Just get high as fuck. And drive all through the back roads and you got the birds, the trees and wow. it's very, very relaxing and peaceful. Okay. No city noises, no, mm. none of that. So, okay, you were smoking blunt rides, smoking hearing, blunt. I don't know, hearing the birds chirp, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You're chilling out, you're having a good life. Mm -hmm. In your cowboy boots with your guns and shit. What made you move to California, where currently there's a guy out there with a the boombox, tripping out of his mind, yelling people on the street about Jesus? Uh, I mean, I just wanted to see what all the hype was about a few years ago. So what's the dream? Like, did you want to do, did you come here for acting or, or just like to feel out and see what the hype is about? <laughs> I came to see what the hype is about, but it was mostly to shake my booty and shake my balls. Oh, okay. So, and then see what happens. Yeah. So where, when you, when you say <clears throat> you shook your booty and your balls, was there like a specific establishment where you're shaking your balls or was it just for fun? Were you want, were you on a Hollywood Boulevard with a boombox shaking your boobs? It was your balls. No. What was like? I was uh, stripped. Oh yeah? Yeah. In in in, Cal in LA. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> You've got I mean he, he gives you look like um I mean like you look prettier than the Magic Mike guy, right? Oh, I wouldn't say He that. can do tummy rolls too. Can we get a tummy roll? I can't do a tummy roll. I thought you told me that's like your move, bro. The 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 body weight, but not a yeah. like an actual tummy. Oh, can y'all do it? Where you get the oh, really what was the other? <laughs> I think we're good. Well, I don't think we're good. I think, I think, I think I'm just breathing. I'm just, <laughs> just breathing. I'm just taking breaths. Wow. We talked to Alfie in my last podcast, who oh. came from Hungary okay. and started stripping in the United States. No, yeah, I stripped with him. Oh, you did with him? Oh, so you knew him before? Yeah. Oh. That's the circle like, pros. Uh, like vaguely, we didn't. We weren't like friends or anything. Like I didn't. But I've, I've saw his face like stripping with him like he was your client or like together. No, no, he's stripping. Because <laughs> I can see Alfie be like, <laughs> to like come here to talk. Yeah, yeah, come you come know? Come here, talk. <laughs> no, no, he danced to the uh, same club. Okay. 
Wow. Because Alfie is intense, but he told me that he moved to uh, to the U.S. Mm. and started doing twenty dollar lap dances. And then he said, "No, that's how much they were." And then he that's said so he bought his mother a house. And I was like, "Brother, I ain't no mathematician, <laughs> but like, how many lap dances? doing twenty dollar, <laughs> right?" I was <laughs> like, "Bro, he's like an efficient, you know what I mean? Yeah, how many do you do?" Uh, uh, yeah. So what's the deal with like twenty dollar lap dance? So okay, so, so okay, so here's how it works: it's twenty dollars a song. And okay. You give a lap dance for that song. Okay. But usually they're so drunk in there, you know. Like, two songs go by. I'm like, all right, that was, that was eight songs. So oh, okay, okay. You, that's and how then, you and that's how and you then buy a helps, house. It helps because the DJ's mixing up all the songs, so all they all flow together. Yeah. So like five ten minutes back there, you can use. That's five ten songs. <laughs> Twenty dollars a song, and just like remix, just like like a firework, baby, come on. <laughs> just like straight up. <laughs> One song is like wow. That'll be three hundred dollars. Wow, damn. Okay, and, and also. No, not ninety five percent of the time, nobody ever said, "All right, yeah, just, just one song." Like, yeah, it was, yeah, it was like let's, let's dance for 10, 20 minutes. Yeah. Like, so. Okay, cool, yeah. cool. And was it mainly okay? So the audience for male strippers is it mainly men or women? At the clubs I worked at, it was mainly men. Mainly men. Yeah. Is that like does it pay more? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say so. I mean, the bachelorette parties that I did for girls, I mean, they threw some cash down, but yeah. I mean, that's like <clears> personal. <throat> At home, I, I can relate to that yeah. because I've never told the story before. I think right. publicly. Let's hear it. I went to New Zealand when I was 19 years old. I lived there for a year okay. as a desperate German guy. You know, I was doing kiwi picking, but I was like, "Fuck the kiwi picking!" Because I was getting paid mm -hmm. per pound, and there were some Asian girls that would like just they have like eight arms like an octopus. They would just like <laughs> pick all the kiwis, and I would also eat some sometimes. So I made like the equivalent of like two two New Zealand dollars an hour. I was, br it was not enough to live. Yeah. But then a company approached me and they're called, no joke, Strip for Meat. I don't know, it's, it's literally what they're called. Um, and uh, they hired me to become a shirtless, bar shirtless bartender for uh, bachelorette parties. Oh, nice. They call them hen's nights in New Zealand. Okay. So I basically was uh, shirtless at these parties with these white, Kiwi women, they're really funny, like middle-aged, you know, like um, not quite as old as Jeff, like about, they're about like in their 40s and stuff like that. And, uh, <laughs> and, and uh, it was, I remember I was with this one guy and I'm not kidding, his name is actually Zach. Okay. And uh, he was like a uh, boxer, he was like this guy who was like very confident, I was very shy. And he always told me you have to take more charge and I was just there being like, hey, ladies. And he was like do, up there doing like, be like belly shots of his body and mm. stuff. And they were doing all these games with us, right? One time I had to uh, like lay down. They had to, she had to pad my body and guess where my penis was and stuff like that. It was like a whole, oh, shit. yeah. Okay. You know, like the game as kids, we call it Topfschlagen in German, where you have a spoon and you're blindfolded and you have to find something. Yeah. And she had to do that yeah, with yeah, my. Yeah. It's like know. pin the donkey on the tail or whatever, blind. That, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the American. Yeah. How did that make you feel? It made me feel um, great. Honestly, I, I like the attention. I like the attention from these ladies. Everybody likes a little bit of attention. Right? Did she like. find it? Did she find your, your pecker when she was doing this? It was not as evolved yet, so it was hard to find, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did you, do you feel that though? Like when you do, uh, so when you do, when you do stripping, is there a part where it's attractive because you feel like admired? By those people you get like the attention no that's what i'm saying Every, yeah everybody like who doesn't like a little bit of attention every now and then you know yeah so of course of yeah. course i liked it i 100 percent yeah. i like attention yeah. i could need a little bit more from you and sometimes. you're getting paid and yeah you, all eyes on you so i was just saying i think you you met reno stripping as well right i met him in palm springs for the first time okay so where's the most action is it in florida is it here i'd say in new york well at, new le york? at least a couple years ago it was new york for stripping yeah, yourself? yeah. okay yeah, because there was like three different clubs on the same like block, and then there's Hell's Kitchen. So there's just yeah, kinda, like here it's just West Hollywood, just yeah. the street, and then after that it's not really. Mm. And then how about Florida? Florida, Florida has Johnsons, right? Johnsons. Yeah, I, I'm. I like never Hughes's? danced in. Yeah. Oh, like Johnsons. The the club. Oh, the club. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, because I've been to. I've been to. Okay, so I have a, a friend of mine who um, I went on trips with, and he. Is a gay, I mean certifiably very <clears throat> likes likes he likes he like listen, he likes paying people for sex also sometimes, you know? And I went with him to a lot of strip clubs. Okay. 
So I actually know a lot of strip clubs. I went to Fort Lauderdale with him. I went to like, um, like Puerto Vallarta. Now I know the clubs mm -hmm. there and stuff. So would you say it was mainly a positive experience or was there any dodgy shit that happens? Was it mainly you, be, you, be, you being admired, you getting respected by people? Oh no, Or yeah. was there some like... Yeah, no, it was totally cool and I guess that comes with me like keeping boundaries and hanging with the right people, but yeah. no, it was totally cool, positive. No shit went down, made memories. Yeah. You know, that's what I also feel like, because this guy, just like Alfie, I feel like you seem like a very... Like, I wouldn't fuck with you, you know? Oh, like, if come I. On. No, for real, yeah. for real. Yeah. You're like six fucking four. No, 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 but also, okay, I'm also a little pussy. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a joke, I'm a little pussy. Yeah. But like, um, like Alfie, you know, I'm asking Alfie too, hey, has anybody ever taken advantage of you? And I was like, who's gonna take advantage of Alfie? Yeah. Like, you know, look at the guy, look at the yeah. guy, look yeah. at the guy. Yeah. Got the beard, got the height. He's oh, got the, he's got the horse cock, the beard, man. It's, it's beautiful, it's beautiful. <laughs> I want to know more about Alfie because you yesterday shot with Alfie. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I sh we shot with Alfie too. Yeah. He made me do like 120 TikToks. Uh, oh, I was we, exhausted. We did about 120 TikToks. He pulled me in the shower and he did things to me that I never thought a man would do to me. No, I'm It was very non-consensual. Yeah. How was your experience shooting with Alfred? I. I mean, you pretty much summed it up. <laughs> That's pretty spot on right there. We did about 120 TikToks. And okay. We go to uh, up to his place and we're filming and taking pictures. And I was like, oh, it looks like we're about done for the day. And then the shower turns on and I'm like, well, all right. And I get pulled into there. And then next thing you know, we got four guys in a shower, uh, like four, four by four. Where did the guys come from? They're just like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Literally, literally. Literally the same thing happened when we were shooting. Exactly, exactly, exactly the same. Wow. All of a sudden, this Aust Austrian dude showed up, Elias, out of fucking nowhere. You know, this like Arnold Schwarzenegger dude just like shows up while we're shooting. I was like, where does the guy come from? And next thing you know, I'm in the shower with him. It's just like, that's the life we're living right now. I love it. I love it. It was a nice shower though. I got clean. Great. Did you do the jacuzzi stuff too? No. We went in the jacuzzi and made some TikToks. Too. Okay. Okay, so, that's fun. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. What a guy. Yeah. A legend. A legend. Good guy. Good guy, but fun. Intense. Intense. Intense, intense guy. Yeah. Intense. Yeah. Very unique person. Very mm -hmm. unique person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I found that very interesting with your story, right? So you grew up in Tennessee. Yeah. Then you do stripping here. And now what's the journey? Is it mainly like OnlyFans? Just for now, I'm just finding my way, man. Yeah. I'm, I'm making my money doing OnlyFans and just venturing off and trying to find new hobbies and, you know, just kind of going with the flow. Yeah. I'm not really like pushing put too much energy into one thing, but just, you know, I'm just living, living life, oh, staying it. cool. You've got that vibe, I like you. Yeah. Cool. You're kind of like you, you know, you actually, you're kind of similar. Mm. I mean, you're from Tennessee, you both got that like- I mean, me and him are motherfucking potheads, so we're just, mm. we're just like, hey. Motherfucking potheads, pot I feel that. Yeah. Yeah. I got a question for him. Uh, back to your, your stripping days. So Reno told us a really good story. It's about Big Daddy. Okay, oh, it's like shit. you know big, you know big daddy. Yeah, <laughs> he knows big daddy. So big just daddy. to like paraphrase, he's notorious, he's infamous in New York, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, for getting like a the, bunch the, of the king guy at New York the for like for kingpin. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he gets a bunch of kids, like well, I don't know, a bunch of boys like together, yeah, yeah. and then kind of like one by one sends them on their way. Yeah, he likes to be talked down to, like condescendingly mm -hmm. talked down to. It's, he's got more than just that. And he's just like this big, fat, Huge. nasty, like Turkish-looking yeah. guy. I just I'm picturing job by the hut right now. Bro. Exactly. <laughs> he's just sitting there, just eating food, and people are talking shit to him. Yeah, that dude. sounds not like a terrible time. Do you have any, any episodes, experiences like that? Like something stick out to you? But did you actually go to Big Daddy's? No, I went once, and I. No, I. I <laughs> no, told, I went once. <laughs> I, I went once, and I. I knew my limits because. Those guys in there, it's, they, I don't know what they're doing, but I went in there and he was like, hey, can you put that tuxedo on? I was like, for what? So I put the tuxedo on, he's like, all right, walk to my door and come back. And then he gives me 400 bucks. I'm like, <laughs> he's like, all right, man. Wow. I was like, all right. You just saved so, yourself $20, $20 lap dances. I had $20, you know? $20 lap dance. And then he said, all right, man, we'll see ya. I was like, all right, see ya. I was so- That confused. was it? Yeah. And then we go back again. And then uh, I went with a lot of guys this time. Do you have a number? 
<laughs> what? Do you have his number? I want to go there and like just shit, man. I don't have. I've that. I've put on so many clothings and like walk back and forth in the room for like Milan Fashion Week and I got no money <laughs> and rejection and I I'd, I'd like to do that in New York for like four hundred dollars. Wow. Yeah, no, he'll look you up. I don't know about nowadays. And that was the only time you saw him. I went back once, and um, yeah, he had like ten guys in there. Okay. And I went with a friend and then. Uh, I don't know, we were just kind of sitting there, and then he gave us like another 400 for just showing up. I was like, okay. And then he was like, all right, um, drug time. I was like, I'm out. So he's like, for each line everybody does, you get $100. So he puts lines oh all over the table. Lines, lines, lines. Of all right, what? Coke. Coke. Yeah, and then $200 if you do it off his dick. And then I was like, hey, y'all. <laughs> Nobody said shit. All the guys were there. And I was just like, I guess I'm the pussy today. Peace, and I never went back because that's not really me. So I was like, "Cause you're a motherfucking pothead." We I'm learned a that. Motherfucking pothead. Wow. <laughs> Do you think he does the cocaine lines? Because like cocaine, I don't endorse it or condone it, but yeah. it makes me horny. Do you think he's like? No, that's why. Yeah, yeah. He had all that? the drugs, okay. dude. He had all the shit. Co that coke was just the first hey, this start. Is yeah. This is your next daddy. This is my future. Mm. I'm gonna be big daddy. I'm gonna be Jabba the Hutt. Holy shit! Holy You're shit! Big daddy. Damn, that's crazy though. Like, okay, I've had. Hmm. This is Los Angeles. This is Los Angeles. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, cool. Alright, he's here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they come man. down the door. <laughs> big fat daddy! Big fat daddy! <laughs> <laughs> I got everything we said. Oh my god, Big Fat Daddy. Does the guy okay. have a name at all? Like, or is uh, it just like you? I okay, think it's literally listen, Big Fat Daddy. I'm lucky. So when you go and you address him, you go like, "What's up, Big Fat Daddy?" No, you you just say, "Hey, Daddy." Wow. Yeah, they're all saying, "Hey, Daddy," because uh, he likes. I guess his fetish is um, cash slave, just paying money mm -hmm. to people. Uh, or there's a fetish where like, there's a fetish for being. Financially exploited by people. No, I know that's a fetish. But I don't think that was his. His is more like a group of like boys, and he's the dad of all yeah. the boys. Okay. So you do what he says and wear his clothes. So that's because everybody is saying yes, sir, yes, daddy, and I wasn't doing that. So yeah, uh, yeah. So I got my four hundred and damn, yeah. you missed out, yo. <laughs> 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 okay, cool. Um, okay, I've had, okay, I have a similar story that I think I've mentioned before. I once did a job for a person with a real name, though, in New York, mm -hmm. very wealthy person, who basically went up to me and was like, Hey, Mario, listen, <clears throat> I'm doing this underwear party, and I need a bartender. And I was like, oh, no, listen, I have asp aspirations to become a fashion model. I don't want to do bartending in New York. Then he, then he told me he was going to pay me like $1,000. I was like... Do you want me to do mojitos or what? <laughs> I was like, I'm done. So <clears throat> what I didn't know is that a, an underwear party just for men is just another word for a gay orgy, essentially. You know what I mean? So I went to this place. It was funny as hell. Like I show up <clears throat> and um, they had like a code check. You had to check your phones. It was very official. Wait right? a minute. Yeah. yeah. Is it called Adonis? No. Okay. Because that probably... sounds kind of like the party I, I went to one time. I mean, we can bleep this out, but like the person was. No, I don't. I'm not saying I know the person. But okay, okay. I've done a party similar to what you're saying, where you check your coat and the phone and all that shit. I mean, I've done. I've I've gone to parties in Berlin. You know, like Kit Kat Club. It's like a new, like a. It's basically new to you. You have to go and you cannot wear pants. Basically, a lot of people go naked. A lot of people wear like leather leather fetish. It's very open. Oh. Okay. So some nights you have to just wear and you check in your phone. I've been to official parties like that. That was a private party by this dude. And uh, he just wanted me to bartend. I didn't know how to bartend. He just wanted me to be there, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was a model and stuff. Just, yeah. Uh, no joke. At some point, like, no joke, bro. They detached a moose head from the wall and were doing lines of ketamine off a moose head while one of the guys was blowing the other dude. And I was like, I'm out. I, you know, I was like, that was my That's I made it. it moment. I was like, I want to be a fashion model, and here I am making mojitos. Well, what? And the funny thing is, like, one of the guys who, who was organizing the party was like, he came up to me, he was like, hey, Mario, listen, I want you to have fun. And I was like, I'm having a great time talking to everybody. You know, I was really making friends. He was like, no, I want you to have fun. So he asked me to come, because he also thought I was like, he probably thought I was like, you know, fully gay. Yeah. So then, maybe you're like, you're just happy. I was young, no, I was pretty much asexual at the time. You know, I didn't have any, because I don't know. It's a long story when I get into it. Anyway, so then I, uh, I went. And he asked me to go up to the second floor. By the way, a New York apartment that has two floors, you know that shit's like the person's wealthy as fuck. Yeah. It's probably a nice apartment I've ever seen in New York. Yeah. 
in the second floor, every mo every so every step I take to go up, I, I could feel the aura of the penises just increasing, you know? Like the force, I could feel like a force field of dicks around me. And you know, I went up there and it was it was in, like it was pretty intense. I've ne I'd never seen <clears throat> I'd never seen anybody, not just gay people, I've, I'd never seen full on banging. Like in real life, somebody else, just like mm -hmm. out of the public. I was so confused. I was like, because I was 21 or something, you know, I just walked up there, I was like, holy shit. And then all of a sudden, it's like, once you make eye contact with somebody for longer than half a second, you basically give full consent. So I was, I feel like I was walking to a field of like wolves or like predators or something, you know? <laughs> so then I was like, hey, I think I'm gonna just go smoke a cigarette. I didn't even smoke, you know? <laughs> so I just went out straight through that, like trying to block out everything that was happening, went straight for like the, the outdoor, uh -huh. you know? And then had a cigarette and then the guy came out, the owner, and was like, hey man, we should have dinner one day. I was like, sure, for sure, for sure. And then <laughs> I was like, <laughs> and then I like left and I said, yeah, you did good for tonight. And then he gave me another $600. And I took a piece of, that was a funny shit, I took a piece of like, like chocolate lava cake or whatever, like some red velvet cake. Yeah. And I took that home and I walked out and I looked out, there was a billboard of Calvin Clyde in New York and I was like, you know, I once had dreams, but here I am fucking, <laughs> you know, made $1,600 uh, watching some dude get blown by a, next to a moose head. And, but I got a piece of red velvet chocolate cake. Oh, so <clears throat> that was, that was uh, my big daddy experience. So you didn't, like in Berlin, you, there were no like, you know, Berlin gangbang experiences that you... Oh yeah, Berlin is, but those are actual parties. Like, okay. I went to this one party where like, you know, we, we were talking about last podcast with Justin, right? You see like, I, we went to this party where like, there was a guy with devil horns and like a metal thong. And there was like a guy just like, they were just having full on sex mm -hmm. next to the DJ booth. It's just Berlin, but that's like, that's different because that's more like the openness of the expression. That was a specific party, like as an orgy, you know? And you remember yeah. our experience? What was the gay festival we went to? Utopia. Utopia. You should. Oh, you come. didn't. You should. Utopia. Come. I've that heard was, of it. Yeah, that was, was. You were supposed to come. With Reno Gold organizing. Is it? It's a. It's a gay festival, though. Sorry. Right? It's sort. I mean, not sort of. It's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's very very gay. What's what's? They literally do? changed it from Isla Mujeres to Isla Muchachos. Was <laughs> <laughs> it like a circuit party type of stuff? Uh, I wouldn't say that. I would just say the very last day Mario wasn't there, very last uh, festival day. Where were you at? Sleeping, because yeah. I'm like a little, I'm, I'm not, I don't party like that. No, yeah. I'm and then also like I, um, yeah, I don't know. He's it's the workhorse. Like, I'm like, the workhorse, yeah, I pulled, you know, yeah. Okay. But I'm, it's the last day of the festival, um, I'm on mushrooms in there, mm -hmm. and I go to the side, and there's like, people are just, the one dude is just fucking the face of this guy, and security's just standing there. Just watching, and it was so strange. But maybe it's because I was on mushrooms. But I'm just what, like, this dude's just getting face fucked. Security's just like, just kind of looking around. I was like, I don't know if we should be here. Or not. <laughs> also, was, was security like a local Mexican guy? Yeah. Oh, that's the funny shit ever. You know, because Mexican people are generally like, there's a lot of machismo happening and stuff, and you know, there's like, just like some local Mexican dude up all of a sudden, like, <laughs> all the gays of the world, like, assembly go to this one place and. Yeah, man. I've been to Fire Island in New York once. <clears throat> it's intense too. It's a festival. It was fun. I loved it. No, it's a it's a place in New York. Fire Island. Fire Island. Yeah. What is it? Have you been? Uh. -uh. I mean, I think Big Big Fat Daddy is like would would have a blast there. It is. So Fire Island is like this place. It's in the ha close to the Hamptons, the Pines, um, <clears throat> where it's it's a, it's like the mecca of like gay okay. parties in the East Coast for okay. sure. I thought it's that huge. was like Hell's Kitchen though. No. I mean, yeah, but like Hell's Kitchen is very gay, but like that is literally a location where all the gays have like vacation homes. Okay. Sort of like oh, Palm Springs, but for party. Oh, okay. But it's, it's yeah, that, that was fun too. We did an editorial there. We gotta do a gay festival. Yeah. The three of us. We should. I, I wanna go. So, I do you party a lot? You said you don't also go out a lot, right? You like more. If I do party, it's gotta be like a planned event with yes. friends. I Yo, can't, just, so I can't just go out Friday and be like, yo, it's gotta I'm, be like an event and an experience and I wanna be able to have fun and have, be around friends. So yeah, yeah, I feel that. It, so not often, but when I do, that's hot. I love that. I'm the same way. Like I'm like, I love going to specific events like Coachella mm -hmm. or something and then just knowing, okay, I'm gonna, that's, I'm gonna take that time to celebrate. Yeah, yeah. But I don't like the fact if I party during like on the regular week, day or weekend it kind of fucks up my whole like rhythm and stuff and then it yeah. impacts the next week so I'd rather like have those specific moments like every two months or something to like actually. yeah yeah and it's time for me yeah like the last time I went out before New Year's was like six months like the last yeah. time I went out was New Year's and that's yeah. New Year's like I'll go out on New Year's so. yeah. yeah cool 
Uh, Mario and I, the one time we went out in Tulum where we took a little bit of LSD. Oh, Tulum's fun. One girl comes up and talks to me. Mario immediately pops in. Hey, what's going on over here? I'm like, just talking to this girl. What's going on with you? What do you mean? I just like talking to people. Nice timing. I don't like when these blonde Colombian women talk to my bro. You know? No, but t tell him what she said to you. How, what was her opening line? You must have a nice Johnson because... <laughs> it's not what she said. <laughs> it's not what she said. Did you say something? Oh. Yeah, right? Are you gay? Or yeah, right? Yeah. She came up to him, like, out of, like, just no context, just walk up to him, like, are you gay, you know? <laughs> I mean, Jeff, there's something to reflect on you for years. <laughs> like, I was like, sort of. <laughs> <laughs> on the weekend, yeah. Oh my god, we just got a news alert. News alert, guys. We got a news alert. Oh. There's a guy called Titus Loeb or something like that, a Singaporean OnlyFans creator. And he is getting arrested by the Singaporean police for doing OnlyFans. It's kind of like Dubai then. If you get called doing OnlyFans, you'll get arrested out there. Oh, for real? Yeah. So wait, Dubai, so you, were, you just went to Dubai for New Year's? Like if you're a resident of Dubai and you have- Oh, if you're a resident. Yeah, like a tourist, if you, you can't, yeah. I mean, they can't really track yeah. that, but like, yeah. don't, don't quote me, but that's kind of like what I've heard. What a lot of people say, <laughs> quote me on that. <laughs> you can't access it on the Wi-Fi. You that's, yeah. The VPN. Yeah, 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 oh, yeah. Dubai yeah. as well? Yeah, you can't access it on their Wi-Fi. Kind of like China. Yeah. Anyways, what, what were you saying? He got arrested and- No, I think it was just so crazy. It's an OnlyFans creator who said like, he just made all these purchases and stuff and then all of a sudden, the police like showed up at his door, like as if he was like, you know, that's, I find it interesting. They showed up at his door as if he's like, you know, cooking meth or something and just like raided his place what? and took him. And um, now he's, there's an ongoing investigation and he can't do OnlyFans anymore because Singapore, they have no like local porn industry. And even OnlyFans, like it's so, like it's very, like Singapore is very strict on drugs. I used to live there as a model. Okay. So okay. you can't do drugs there. I mean, you can, but it's not gonna end well. Even like cigarettes, smoking outside is not allowed. You, only very specific areas. If you drop gum on the street, they can fine you up to like whatever, like a thousand dollars. Jeez. It's crazy. What was the experience then in Dubai? Like in general, was it like very strict for you as a, Dubai? Like, with drugs and like, cause you're a motherfucking pothead, yeah. right? I brought in some weed edibles. Okay. That was kind of the, the, you know, as far as I went. I was told you about my ex. Yeah. That she did a collaboration with a hotel and they did a picture in the bathtub. They gave him a VIP room with an aquarium. Nice. In like the bathroom or the, yeah, in the bathroom. So they took a picture where they're looking at the aquarium in the bathtub. Two girls in the bathtub. Yeah. The police came and threatened them that they were not going to be able to leave the country because it was homosexuality. Wow! Wow, that's... And so they like, had to take it down. I don't know, they had to pay like some fine or something through the hotel. But it was like a sexual act? What were the girls doing? They were not, it was not a sexual act, but they were both in the bathtub, so I guess it was kinda... Yeah. Like, people could take it a different way. Yeah. But they're just like pointing at the, it's like, be like you and I just sitting here, it's like pointing at like this from behind. Okay, what is it, what is it, okay, what about like if you're a gay guy, a gay couple, right, and you just want to show affection, like kissing in public and stuff like that, is that also banned or not allowed? What's the deal with I, that? I, I think they're rapidly becoming more lenient and progressive, but yeah. I think in general, no, like public display of affection is not cool there. Damn. Not really allowed. Well, just between, between like same sex or also in general? In general. Okay. But Damn. probably even more strict with homosexuality. Even though I saw like, I saw some guys holding hands. So I don't know if that's, but you know, some like in different places, like in India, guy friendships, that's pretty common. So I don't know if that's yeah. like a thing, or, you know. Well, India is like, it's not, you know. Yeah, well, I just think like, yeah. like, cause I think in Turkey, I heard the same thing. Like guys holding hands doesn't mean anything. It's like okay. a friendship thing. I don't know why I'm thinking about it. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> he seems cultured. Maybe Our local, Brown. I wouldn't be allowed in Dubai. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for real? Do you think? Oh so? yeah, for sure. So if Kevin expressed himself like in a more feminine way, that's yeah, like for so sure. That, that would also so you would never, you wouldn't even, that it wouldn't interest you to go to Dubai for that reason also. Or? Yeah. Yeah. I can see that. Really? The crack in my voice. So if you're a feminine guy, you can't go to Dubai. There's nowhere to even get past. Like what would they say? You tell me. <laughs> I'd have to probably go incognito. But I don't think I can like actually exist there. That's it, right? yeah. sir. No, I mean, okay, Ke Kevin is not wearing. Kevin that. is very good. I'm gonna put a picture. Here. Kevin is like a fucking chameleon or something. Like he will one day when we're traveling, he looks fabulous. You know, like with the corset. The next morning we're shooting or something, he shows up in like not just like 
you know, neutral, but like the most bro you can get, like a base, a basketball cap, like a whatever, like a Raider sweater or something. Is a, <laughs> I was like, yeah, fuck with that, you know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I was gonna bring up the Singapore thing because I think it was, it was crazy to see that, like, you know, I feel like sex work and all that stuff is becoming more accepted and more, everything's opening up more towards that. Like, but the fact that somebody's getting arrested for that is like, you know. Yeah, that's pretty intense. What would you do? What would you do? If police came up to you and was like, hey, you just like lost your job, you can't, you know what I mean? It's like. I'd probably call all y'all and be like, yo, y'all got an attorney for this shit? Let's, let's go with this. I think he has a lawyer. Also, like, the thing is now, it's so weird because this guy's in Singapore now and he's a Singaporean resident. Mm -hmm. So he's got like a lot of like the media attention of the West is obviously in his favor because it's kind of weird and like very backwards to like. You know, for like open self expression, especially because the nudity. I get, I get the point if you're talking about protecting the youth. If you yeah. share that content on like maybe on Twitter, it's another story, but OnlyFans is behind a paywall and nobody sees it who doesn't want to specifically see it, right? Mm -hmm. It's not like putting something and like you have to be 18 to make an account. Exactly. So. so I feel like it is very consensual in that sense. You're not yeah. like, pr like promoting nudity to somebody who doesn't want to see yeah, it or exactly. kids, right? It's not like. Yeah walking around with your schlong dong out down like a playground or something. That's something I understand, you know? So it's just a little backward, you know? And uh, is it like, what's what kind of government is it? It's not like governed by Sharia law. Singapore? Oh, no, no, Singapore is not at all. So what's the deal? Singapore is very strict. Just, Sing Singapore is not a Singapore is not a Muslim country. You yeah, know, I Singapore is a, so. a British, like British, Singapore is like Switzerland. Singapore is like one of the wealthiest countries in Southeast Asia or in Asia in general. Very small, no natural resources, just like very smart politics, very well organized. Okay. Like Singapore is the cleanest place in the world. So it's just like, it's kind of like Dubai then in a way. It's clean. It is in a way, yeah. yeah. Just like, you know, there's not must, you know, it's well, yeah. The, yeah, different, different. I think Dubai has, it has, it's actually a very good question. I have to do some more research on it. I don't know why specifically Singapore is that way I don't know like what in terms of religion what you know but is it just only fans or like do they tolerate you know like what about the other sites Instagram no, 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 no. you know no I mean Instagram sure yeah no no everything's like, open okay Instagram YouTube you can be a youtuber it's off all, all fine just like sexual stuff specifically it's not like China China is another level right China is not so much about the nudity China is more about like control so they won't allow any apps that are not government owned mm -hmm. so western apps like youtube google i couldn't use google maps in china because it was like google owned. Yeah. you can only use wechat which is basically the government owns it so it's like it's kind of interesting because like every single transaction you make they also use wechat becomes like it's like whatsapp and like apple pay combined with facebook and instagram so you do everything through wechat like you pay people i was paying people like on wechat i was doing some modeling in china right mm -hmm. so you, you pay people on wechat so the government is actually owns every single transaction. This is full surveillance, basically. Yeah. Damn, bro. Well, we got life pretty easy here in America. I can't imagine. I mean, I feel like OnlyFans has kind of liberated a lot of the world. You yeah. Know what I mean? Especially struggling models, sex workers. Yeah. And just say, no, you can't do this. Yeah. That's rough. Man. Yeah, because this guy also I watched this video. I'm gonna link it down below. He also. Uh, his, par his parents wouldn't support him anymore and he just wanted to do his own thing mm -hmm. and so he quit ties with his parents and then he felt like very alone in this so it's very it's very uh you gotta reach out to him you're gonna help, help the, the guy show. yeah i mean he's in jail no he's not <laughs> not anymore right now but like yeah, it's okay. bail him yo we got you we'll take you well, out also he was making a lot of money i think he, he bought a lambo in singapore let's collab yeah. <laughs> what's the year 2022 look like for you you can stay in arizona you're gonna like travel more Mm, I'd like to, well, I'm definitely going to stay in Arizona because, yeah, but I'd like to go to um, Puerto Rico or um, Costa Rica and look at property. Okay. Maybe save property? some taxes. Yeah. Oh. Maybe claim residence, stay out there half the year, half the year come back. Puerto Rico? Like the taxes are getting a little bit pricey out here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Puerto Rico is like... mins and outs. Yeah, so yeah. going on, so. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's kind of where I wanted to go this year. Cool. I mean, mm -hmm. it sounds like a nice base. Yeah, what about you? Where Logan you, Paul did that. that. Yeah. He went to Puerto Rico and like, spent some time there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What Damn, about bro. you? Where, where are you trying to go? So the thing is, my, it's my mom's birthday in February. Oh. February 12th. Love yeah. you, mom. And I'm going to definitely go to, to Germany Sweet. to celebrate. It's her 60th birthday. Oh, okay. So I want to go. We want to go to the Grand Canary Islands in Spain. Mm -hmm. And then Kevin said he might go to the Philippines oh. for the first time. And I've been wanting to go to the Philippines forever. 
So maybe I'll actually do that. The thing is like right now my US visa is expiring. Okay. So I'm like with lawyers right now, I'm trying to get that figured out and stuff. It's very, it's a very complicated process. So but if I can get the Philippines in, why the fuck not? And Bali. And Bali? Why Bali not? Cool. Maybe, but then I, I like- I want to go back to Tulum. Tulum's fun too, yeah. 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 I've just spent a lot of time there last year because like of, I couldn't get back into the country as a German, so I had to always go to Mexico. So I spent a lot of time in Tulum and for in uh, Cancun and stuff. But that sounds like a plan, Stan. And I want to also do one thing, big announcement, guys. I want to go this year back to New York Fashion Week. I have a plan. I want to make a documentary where I get an agency again in New York, get signed again, do a bunch of coke and cigarettes so I can lose weight and become a fashion model again. And then I'm gonna make a new documentary going to New York Fashion Week and probably not book anything. But I'm gonna document everything, the highs, the lows, the thighs, uh, uh, the hosts. A, a life, a month in life of a uh, New York fashion. It's gonna probably gonna be called The Naked Truth About Modeling. Perfect. Part two, because I've done one before in Milan. <laughs> so that's the, that's the plan for now. Um, yeah, and then stand-up comedy. Yeah. Do more stuff here. Try You're a funny guy. Tell me a joke. How, what do you call a bagel that can fly? A pothead. A plain bagel. <laughs> that's <laughs> fucking and that's, and, and that's why, guys, that's why I'm a stand-up comedian. I have a show coming up at the Improv and the Laugh Factory, actually. We're doing a show at the Laugh Factory 24th, which is crazy. So I'm very excited for that. Hopefully, um, life's going to be better for Jeff, you know, because he's been through a lot lately. And um, I think we gotta go out of this place now, otherwise I could chill for a little bit longer. But uh, guys, as always, mm. life begins at the end of your comfort zone. That is very true. <laughs> so if you live within your comfort zone, there's no life, right? So think about that hard and yeah. long. Take that, <laughs> take that. Write That's it good. down. One carrot a day keeps the doctor away. Subscribe <clears throat> to the channel. And, and we're going to time. Fogo de Chao now. We're going to Brazilian steak this motherfucker. Yes! Let's go. Let's go. All right. Nice. That's what I'm talking about.